Hello everyone and welcome back to Better Biomed. Today I actually do have something very special I'm going to share with you. We are going to go ahead and troubleshoot this guy right here. This is a 55 inch TV found in the trash and I have no clue really what's going on with it. I haven't opened it yet. It's still dirty from being outside but it's got a unique problem which I think is going to be fixable. So let's go ahead and hit the power button so you can see what it's doing. You see it's turning on. And nothing. So it does have a display. The video processor board does work. It does show what my computer is showing on the HDMI port. And then it does this mysterious thing. It just shuts off out of nowhere and it's random so here's the weird thing about it I believe it's a power supply issue the reason I believe that is because it does kill the power completely to the TV and at the same time it shuts off intermittently but the longer the TV is plugged in the shorter the duration and that would tell me that the power supply is getting warmed up. And once it warms up, the duration for the period that it stays on gets shorter and shorter. But if I unplug this TV for an hour and I come back and then I plug it in, it will stay on for a, a, maybe 30 seconds to a minute. But you can see right now it's staying on for about five seconds, shuts off. So let's go ahead and let's take a look inside a LCD TV and see if we can figure out what's going on with this guy. My bet is the power supply, maybe it's something else. Let's take a look. Okay everyone, you can see that I pulled the back cover off. It is laying face down on a carpet. Probably the safest place for this because the screen is the most valuable component in the entire machine. So I'm keeping that safe by keeping it face down. Now, what we have here is what the LG calls the chassis, which is basically a control board or a display board and this one over here is the power supply. These guys down here are speakers. And this right here would be the panel interface board, which basically does a breakout to these cables right here. So on the power supply, which is what I thought was going to be the problem. So this over here is the power supply, which is what I automatically figured to be the problem, especially when a machine shuts off. The reason being is because the output rails right here, you have a three volt, three something volt rail, and you have a standby or, or power on rail, and you also have a 12 and 24 volt rail. And the cool thing about almost all these TVs is that they label everything. You can see there's a little legend right here, which goes through the cable from pin one all the way over to pin 12. So by checking this guy right here, you can see I've got one lead. Um, I first counted out to where the ground was and I found the ground pin and then I went on continuity mode for my meter and I was feeling around till I found a jumper which is one of these solid wires that had continuity with the ground wire. Now I know I'm on the ground plane which is what I put right here. So that leaves me free to troubleshoot with one lead, like this. And my meter's on DC, which, let's see if the camera catches it. So normally the output phase of the power supply is going to be where a lot of your problems are. Every single one of these phases is going to have its own stabilization caps or uh, filtering caps. So we can see that we got a couple of them right here, a couple of them right here, a couple of them right here. According to legend, I have my power on signal, a 3.5 volt signal, another 3.5 volt signal, ground, 24 volts, ground, 12 volts, 12 volts, and ground. So that should be, from left to right, the legend. So now that we have that set, the machine is plugged in. This board is now live, which is why I'm not hovering right over it. You can see the AC comes in over here and it's 
got fusing and some mobs and it's got some power filtering and then it goes into what looks like two different full wave bridge rectifiers right here so I would assume that those are run in parallel with one another I don't know why they did that but we got two full wave bridge and then it comes into a chopper driver which is going to force it through a transformer once it goes through the transformer you can see how the power supply pretty much right there is kind of divided up um, actually it's, it's more divided up let's say like that <laughs> because uh, once it gets through with the bridge rectifier it's going to come over here and this large capacitor right here is going to be for my high voltage DC which is then going to get chopped up and then through the transformer that's probably the best way to do it um, there is another fuse up here which is interesting none of my fuses are bad the TV does turn on but then it shuts back off so what I was automatically figuring is that some of these phases that are in the lower voltage like the CPU rails um, I got two 3.5 volt signals and I've got the power on signal well the power on signal you use it once that turns it on and then the CPU rails which are the 3.5 volts there's two different ones the two 3.5 volts right here well they kind of take over and they run it, it latches and then it runs off those so let's go ahead and take a look TV is off I should have my power on signal so I've got 3.426 now one of the things I want you guys to notice is that the voltages that you're you're witnessing here they're stable it's not fluctuating it's very stable so that was my power on signal when I turn the power on the signal disappears because it's doing its thing all right so the next one is a 3.5 volt signal I got 3.563 I think you guys can see that next one is a 3.5 volt signal 3.564 we're good then I've got ground I got zero volts excellent the next one is a 24 volt Let's see this one right here and it says I got 25 volts stable so that would be your main power for the driver for your backlight so that one is working fine my next one is going to be a ground and then there's two 12 volt rails so I got 11.96 11.95 those are looking pretty good if you see these um, some of these power rails and they're just a little bit low check out these capacitors right over here on the output side of your power supply the reason being is these electrolytic capacitors they do have a shelf life and they do have a life expectancy so what they'll do is they will change some of their values sometimes they'll leak sometimes they will short and as they change their values your voltage on your output rails will be different than what it specified I had a 3.5 volt rail that was going to be my power on signal and my CPU uh, board and I had it reading 3.2 it was supposed to be reading 3.5 so 3.2 and uh, my other display was not turned on and what it was is a couple of these caps over here were bad now that's there's a good thing and a bad thing to that for one thing it's not that hard to fix these power supplies you can tell it's it's kind of a simple design and most of them are not multi-layer you can tell like this one right here they're using jumpers all over the place I don't see any ground plane or anything on there this is an easy board to troubleshoot and to repair if it was bad they sell capacitor kits for this board how cool is that so if I were to type in the model of this power supply I could get a capacitor kit for this board which means somebody actually went through did the research and you can buy for like 10 20 bucks a whole entire kit to refit this entire board which is probably a good thing to do if you have a working TV and it's like 10 years old and you know maybe uh, you hear a little bit of wine coming out of the power supply you might want to look into 
getting a power supply refit kit for your uh, for your TV. So anyway, you can tell that right now all the rails are sitting completely where they need to be. There's two of these 12 volt rails that are a little bit low, 11.96. I am not worried about that, all right? So what I want to draw your attention to is this guy right here. Now this is your control board or your, your uh, display board. They call it a chassis. But this board, one of the first things I've noticed is that right here's the CPU, it gets hot. I'm not saying warm, I am saying hot. And for the size of the heat sink that is on this board, there is no way that that board should be getting that hot. Now notice the TV is off. It is off right now, right? It looks like it's off. So if I hit the input button, okay, we get some lights, some fancy stuff. All right, I have a display. And then my uh, edge lights right here, you'll see that they will go off in just a couple seconds. And then the stupid TV shuts off. So what I'm thinking is that this board right here, yeah, see it just shut off. Yeah, this board I think is getting too hot and it's going into a protection mode, which then it drops the uh, latched signal. And the latch signal is that power on, which is the blue right here, okay? So that power on or remote on signal, that one is the one that goes over to the power buttons. You can see it's probably the same blue wire over here. It's over the power buttons. When you press the button, it returns the signal back to this PCB and if they had a legend over here, I might actually be able to see that return from the power button. I don't want to take a, a chance at shorting out this board or anything, but right now I am thinking that the CPU, the main CPU on this thing is bad. It's getting way too hot. It's I can almost not keep my hand on it so hot. And there's no way that's the way that they would have designed this without some sort of active cooling in a larger heat sink. But yeah, that's, wow, that's definitely warm. So anyway, guys, at this point, I could probably fix this TV if I get a new chassis or a replacement uh, video control board. This board is $91 on eBay right now. Do I want to fix it? You know, I'm up for a gamble. I'll probably pay the $91, have the board shipped in, and see how it turns on. This display actually has a really good picture. And considering I got it for free, considering that the power supply is working beautifully, I have really two options. One option is I could pull the power supply and probably sell it, which I, I don't think I would want to warranty it because you know it's it is an older power supply, probably five or six years old, I would assume. Uh, I wish I could see a date code on this thing. But um, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and order a new control board. Wow, that is so warm. And I think somebody else already had a go at this machine. And the reason I think somebody already had a go at it is because I am finding screws that are loose, like this one right here. So there's screws that are loose. So somebody probably already was in here goofing around, which is normally not a good thing. But I'm assuming that they just counted their losses and they said, yep, it's really broke. And um, I think it's gonna be your uh, display control board over here. 91 bucks, all my voltages are stable. This sounds like a pretty sound investment for uh, a repair. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. Hope you like these type of teardown and uh, real nitty gritty type of videos where I get into how things work. I'm pretty certain that that's exactly what's going on. Um, there's not much else to say. I've already gone into power supplies and showed you guys how that all works. Um, it's just important to know that there are different power phases that come out of a TV power supply. And there's almost always a legend that is written someplace on the PCB. So pay attention to that. And also on your other boards, there's usually some sort of uh, silk screen that kind of describes what each of the wires does. 
This one here, <laughs> not so good, but that's okay. It's a dead giveaway. The TV's not on, or at least there's no image, and this guy is really hot just for sitting here. It's probably that. All right, guys. Thank you very much for watching.